Uh, just be a student of your husband. Like, All truly, caps. I'd like to make a very bold statement on this. I think we just want to nag. Like, honestly, wives are really good at nagging. You can laugh, but, like, it's true. One thing that... Oh, I can? <laughs> Hi, guys. Welcome back to my channel. I am Honey here. When was the last time you were on my channel? It's been a hot minute. I genuinely cannot remember. Because even in, either. even in like vlogs, I feel like. I mean, we did the uh, Song of Solomon reel, which we might yeah, need to do a part two. But that wasn't your YouTube. That was Instagram. No. Yeah. So we just celebrated six years of marriage, which is so exciting. And if the camera keeps moving, it's because of our baby's butt. She's literally, she's right under us. She's nice and awake. So you have to bear with us if you're hearing the little. Little baby noises and stuff. It's the most adorable thing ever. But we just celebrated six years of marriage and we kind of wanted to reflect and share. So we did get married super, super young. I guess by today's standards, yeah. I was 22, Milena was 20. And yeah. we regret getting married so young because we wish we would have gotten married at 18 and 20. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, we do want to talk a little bit about that and what we have learned the past six years. So we normally do podcasts and we have a podcast where we do share a lot of this stuff, but I feel like it'd be a little bit fun to just give a more like sneak peek or like a peek behind the curtain of that. And I actually had questions that I genuinely wanted to ask you mm, and see what your response would be. And I'm intrigued. Yeah, me too. And I really just hope this tripod doesn't fall over because she's now playing with the curtains. <laughs> <laughs> and she discovered the tripod. Hold this. Sister. <gasps> Hi. Contain her in the dog bed. Okay. All right. So, honey, do you regret getting married young? No, I would have gotten married sooner. Really? Probably a year or two sooner. Yeah, we so we had started dating. I was 15 and he was 17. So we were really young when we started dating and we had dated for almost five, like over five years by the time we got married. And so it felt like we knew each other plenty. Like, But looking back, I do, I do not regret anything. I feel like that's one thing that I do not do in life is like look back and regret something because I feel like the Lord can work and use and teach you through every single situation that I don't regret it. But there are some things that I would say to other people who are young and getting married soon and one of those would be boundaries. I feel like we didn't really have boundaries established between you and I and our other family members like mothers-in-laws and father-in-laws and like extended family and I wish that was something that we would have done but I think because we were young because we were naive we didn't do that and it felt like people could not walk all over us but essentially because we were young people are like oh you guys don't really know what you're doing let us help you with this or like mm. i don't know do you yeah. know what i'm saying i got the sense of that a little bit it's challenging when you know someone and you're like high school sweethearts or even we've met a lot of people that knew each other in like grade school or grew up on the same yeah. street and then they get married and you bring a dynamic which i can totally see like from our parents or older people who know us their perspective it's mm -hmm. oh look it's Jordan the teenager, you know, or oh look, it's Jordan the college kid. And mm -hmm. then at some point you just go through life and you transition into different, you know, seasons of life. And mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, I'm different now than I was when I was 17, obviously, yeah. in, a, in multiple reasons. But mm -hmm. I think with marriage being the subject that it is, you ask five people their opinion, you're going to get 50 responses, you know, so kind of taking that in consideration. We didn't want to like make excuses to not get married. We wanted to find reasons to get married. For us, like we wanted to be financially stable, unlike the camera right now <laughs> as Evangeline's uh, rocking underneath it. She's like, what? Me? So yeah, we wanted to be financially stable, whatever that looked like. That doesn't mean we have to be, you know, into our, like, into a huge career that we're going to stay at for 30 years or something mm -hmm. you know we enough that we could pay our bills and put food on the table like that was mm -hmm. something we wanted to do but we also didn't think like oh no i need to i need to finish like post-grad school and then like live on my own a little bit and then you know kind of wait till i get into a job like that wasn't our experience mm -hmm. so our opinion is why give the devil a foothold and allow yourself to be tempted any longer than necessary, you mm -hmm. know, quote unquote. So mm -hmm. for us, it was more, I want to do this right so that we're not setting ourselves up to fail, but also not prolonging and giving our flesh something to feed on that doesn't need to be just for the sake of, you know, something worldly. Oh no, you need to finish school first. Like in our case, yes, I needed to finish college so I could focus on work outside of trying to be a new husband 
and sucking at that and in school and Mm -hmm. sucking at that and having a job and sucking at that you know so like something had to give there why would you say you're sucking it's just reality like you can't do all three well you know like something's gonna get pushed aside and ask me how i know but yeah having like work being married and being in school full-time like you just we're not meant for that (laughs) we're Mm -hmm. not meant to balance all of that together so Mm -hmm. yeah maybe pick two of those at a time so yeah that that would be my advice is if you're going to get married young to have some some sort of goal sheet of like these are what we absolutely need like bare bone minimum Mm -hmm. and then just aim for that and anything additionally is just a bonus you know Mm -hmm. yeah we had to live very frugally those first couple of years i remember like being grocery shopping and having to put back like (laughs) ripping (laughs) two bananas off the pack Mm -hmm. of like five Yep. Because we couldn't afford the, the weight literally down to like a few dollars or else our card would decline or yeah. don't have enough cash in, on me and I'm not going to mm-hmm. ask the guy behind me for, for $5. So we were the first, well we got married, we had never had roommates. Our parents and like siblings were the only roommates we had ever had. And so I think that gave us like a good perspective and like was a good change. But with me being your first roommate, like what would you give to another young man who's about to get married and his wife is about to be his first roommate? Like what advice would you give to them? Oh man, this will be a lot of preaching to the choir, but I would say it's exciting, it's fun. Felt like we were having sleepovers every day. Yeah, the, the, for the first like maybe week or so, it, it just felt like we were on vacation, like doing something that wasn't our whole life, if that makes sense. Because it was so foreign mm-hmm. to like, oh, I'm sleeping in the same bed with Melina now. Mm-hmm. And we're doing we married to, like, things. We wake up together. You know? Yeah. <laughs> it's exciting. Like enjoy that, relish that season of like, you're newly wed. This is awesome. I get to have a sleepover with my best friend forever. And, uh,. <laughs> Evangeline is excited about the sleepovers. I would say, yeah, but don't let that expectation that you're always going to be like sleeping there or always together, always under the same roof, let that be an excuse to not serve them. Like a roommate isn't necessarily someone that you serve and there might be like a mutual benefit. Like we're both working together to the greater good of like paying our rent or, but you usually have like your own food or your own space, you know, but in a marriage it's Everything is shared. What's mm-hmm. mine is Melena's and what's Melena's is Melena's. <laughs> and so I don't have anything else anymore. But it's this idea of two becoming one and it's biblical, right? Man should leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife and the two shall be one flesh. Being one of mind, one of heart. Hot topic, hot take, but we mm-hmm. don't have separate bank accounts. And I know that's, mm-hmm. you know, I know good people that do both, but it's just a matter of uh, Can I make transparency. A, I'd like know? to make a bold statement on that topic. Make bold, like all caps. truly, I'd like to make a very bold statement on this. I think if you are married, you should have the same bank account because you are one and you are united. And I think the enemy can do a really good. Okay, if you look up statistically, the one of the number, I think the top three reasons for divorce is money. And so if you automatically go into your marriage already allowing the division of money to be there I think it's really easy for the enemy to get a foothold in there and then it becomes this argument of well that's mine you spent this much I spent this much like it can cause such division and so I think automatically having the same bank account and it both being yours not I'm making this much and you're not making any Mm -hmm. like I think the enemy has done such a great job of feeding any stay-at-home moms such lies about the values that they bring to their family it is so so it grieves me to see that some women don't think they're bringing any value to the family and to the table if it's not in dollars when they're feeding their family feeding their husband and taking care of their children for their taking house, care of their home cleaning cooking like it is making most... sure the, the house is managed if you're a stay-at-home mom you are a manager you're managing your household you're managing your children you're yeah. managing your husband's schedule so you're doing everything he's not doing right mm-hmm. and that's mm-hmm. something to be honored and to be you know yeah. put on a, on a pedestal to say mm-hmm. like this is something we want to exalt you know yeah it's not it's not political it's more so just saying i recognize the I, value I, that my wife is giving and in, in the, the input she's not just it, a trophy wife or something like that you know where you're just sitting around yeah. doing nothing all day you're actually contributing and 
have great input and great value that you add to the family. So yeah, I mean, back to the finances thing, that's something like Melina said, I think it's communication, finances, and infidelity are like the three top three reasons for divorce. Infidel <laughs> communication, lack of communication, financial problems, and infidelity. We're always struggling with the communication thing and mm -hmm. we've put up fences around fences around fences to mm -hmm. like guard ourselves from infidelity. Well, but, I, I'll but go the and... finance thing is like something you have direct communicate like direct control over, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And I know a lot of people will argue and say like, "Oh, well, we have different things and da -da 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 -da. And there is no direct scripture that I can lead you to that literally says like, "Thou shall have same bank account." Like, I cannot <laughs> lead you to that. But there's enough evidence in the Bible that makes it very, very clear and very obvious to me that that is what husbands and wives should be and just stewarding your money as a family unit, stewarding what you have together and mm -hmm. not just like as separate units and separate entities and i just know so many couples personally in my life who have separate bank accounts and their marriages are not doing it well and it's not to say that's because of that but i think that idea of separation has started to feed into several other areas of their lives and so it's at the point where it's like we are roommates yeah. you know and so then it just becomes again oh you want to buy that go take you have your own money to go do whatever you want with it versus mm -hmm. i have you know my desire is this and does that align with our family's way of spending money mm. you know yeah that's one aspect or it doesn't have to be spending it could be giving right like mm -hmm. we want to support this missionary doing this work what does our budget look like where can we save where can we cut stuff out that so that we can give to this this cause or you might mm -hmm. have like random charity events or church fundraisers and you can look at your your finances and do that as a family and saying this is something we believe in mm -hmm. and we believe in it with our dollar as well something i was even telling melana very recently was i've been kind of the the finance manager in our household i desire to maintain that role and do a, but i need to do a better job at that and i told melana i think it'd be beneficial if her and i were both on the same page month to month because right now it's just kind of like here and there it's it's, it's a little less organized as we'd like mm -hmm. but in the realm of finances especially i want melina to know exactly like here's what we had coming in last month mm -hmm. here's what we spent it on here's what we saved here's what we tied here's mm -hmm. what we gave you know and mm -hmm. so that we're both on the same track with all of that you know yeah. versus just me trying to handle all of that with poor communication to melina on things mm -hmm. and that i think will save us a lot of like headache and frustration too to know mm -hmm. like if we're not communicating something that's like <laughs> two two problems now yeah lack of like proper f stewarding our finances and mm -hmm. lack of communicating that so yeah. that's something mm -hmm. we're we're working on and trying to get better at but mm -hmm. about the roommates thing i've certainly been at fault of treating melina like a roommate a lot where not serving her but expecting her to serve me in a, like an inappropriate level where it's like not even a roommate would do this you know so that's my my mm -hmm. fault so what i was saying is there's times where i've even been at fault of treating melana worse than a roommate and what i mean by that is like a roommate they're responsible for themselves and you're responsible for yourself but there's been times where like i felt melana is not only responsible for herself but for my best interest as well or like doing things like going above and beyond for me instead of me for towards her and the lot of back so again as as one preaching to the choir i would say seek to not only do what your job is and what your role is but also go out of your way to serve your wife and to make sure her needs are met and again it sounds so cliche but that's that's really how you can show love to your your spouse not just roommate of the opposite sex that you know you happen to share a bed with some practical ways to do that i've often found it's usually when a time war like i want to do this but I know Melina needs this, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a matter of like trade off of time, whatever that might be. It's a lot of like time trading and me not being the best at <laughs> balancing time and mm -hmm. very time optimistic. I think I can do more than I can in a allotted amount of time. I often find that, okay, if I do trade this thing to serve Melena, that's gonna end up paying dividends down the road that, okay, she's gonna allow me the time to do this that I need to do because I was able to be there for her when she needs. It's not like a we don't hold it over each other's heads, but it's something where, like the Bible says, you're encouraged to like, outdo one another. If I'm only thinking of meeting Melena's needs and she's only thinking of meeting my needs, then we're not gonna have any issues. It's when I start thinking about myself and being more selfish, that's when the problems happen, so. Mm -hmm. And I guess when Melena's being selfish too.
I guess for like young wives, what I would encourage is to learn how to tame your tongue very easily and quickly and early on. Mm -hmm. Because I think the idea of having an untamed tongue, it's way harder to learn how to rattle your tongue back in than it is to already have it tamed and refining that. I find that it's a lot easier to already have that habit established versus having to unlearn that habit and unlearn those moments where we're not taming our tongue. I mean, I've, you're probably really tired of me using that phrase. If you're on our podcast, I talk about taming your tongue a lot because it's been the thing that the Lord has taught me the most this year because I think the tongue can it, the Bible literally says the tongue has life, can hold life or death. You have the ability to speak life over your family or speak death over your family. And there really is no one or the other. It's not gray. It is truly black and white. And so one thing that I wish I would have known or realized early on is like how much conflict I could have avoided had I learned how to tame my tongue. Because I think a lot of times we either, it's our pride and our ego. We just want to be right. We just want to nag. Like honestly, wives are really good at nagging. You can laugh, but like, it's true. One thing that- Oh, I can? <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for the permission. <laughs> One thing we're really good at is nagging. I think that's something like naturally people are good at complaining. Naturally, we tend to see the worst. Naturally, like we tend to have all these awful things naturally because that's our flesh. Or like we want to have the last word. You know? Yes, we want to be right. We want to win the argument. We want someone to say you're right or I was wrong. I apologize. Like we want like that's just like our flesh. And so I wish that I would have learned early on how to tame my tongue and kill my flesh and not feed my flesh. Mm -hmm. And so I think that would have caused a lot of a much smoother first couple of years because I think also with our age, and I don't wanna blame everything on our age because I think there are several 20 year olds who are fabulous at this. I just know that I was not. I don't know, I think things could have just looked a little bit different. Oh, like I was gonna give a quick example. Like sometimes I think I would get caught up on like the time that Jordan would get home. Like if he was 15 minutes late, like I would just bicker about that. And it's really like such a waste of time and so unproductive and so, I don't know, I feel like it can come off so disrespectful too. And men want to be respected and women want to be loved. Women are supposed to be nurturing. Like the Bible specifically calls what him and I are supposed to do. And I think some of the stuff that I was doing towards him was just a direct reflection of me being disrespectful. She's having a good time over there. Yeah, that's good, honey. I was thinking too, something I could just be like, it could be like emotional immaturity, but something we used to do a lot when we were newlyweds. Mm -hmm. I guess we're still technically, are we technically newlyweds? When do you stop being a newlywed? And when do you start I being like seasoned? Be like three years, yeah. after three years. Yeah, so we're, we're out of that, but. <laughs> I, I feel say, like we've definitely learned a lot in six years. We've definitely not been at, married for 20 years and have definitely had, but I do think that, yeah, we've lived a lot of life and have done a lot of life together in those six years. A lot of like life changing, life altering. A lot altering, of firsts, a lot of milestones. First, yeah, like three kids in those three and a half years, two moves, two builds, like a lot, several job changes, like a, a, a lot, a lot of stuff in a short amount of time that I feel like has definitely quickly made us get on our feet and mature. Sure, and that, what I was kind of going with that is I think with your first couple of years you start off, I know for us, we were very like emotionally immature, mm -hmm. where, I'll give you an example. I would do something to bother Milena, and then she would- On purpose? No, like <laughs> they're just, well, it's never on purpose, honey. Can't think of a specific, but I'll give you like kind of the outline of it, so. Yeah, give us the outline. I would do something, Milena doesn't, like that or appreciate that or it's wrong of me, whatever I'm doing, it's wrong. And then Milena will get upset and she'll voice that to me pretty uh, pretty noticeably. And then I would say, you're right, honey, I'm sorry, I apologize, being the model example husband that I am. <laughs> and then she might not be quick to forgive mm. that. And so now I would get offended and I would go on the offense. I just realized like offending and offense kind of there's there maybe a linkage there verbally but anyways so i would get offended that she wouldn't be quick to forgive and like just like reset her emotions or reset her attitude or whatever mm. so then i would go on the offense and be like 
what's your problem? Why aren't you forget? Why are you so hard hearted? Why aren't you like, what do I have to do? I already said, I'm mm-hmm. sorry. I and like now I'm the, I'm the aggressor. I'm the one that's like going after her. And then she would have to say, Oh, I'm sorry. And then I would play like the cold shoulder game too. And that's yes. like so petty. Like, even just saying it right now, it's like, it's so petty. That's very true. That does seem like a very vicious cycle. And I think, yeah, with, as we just got mature, I realized how prideful I was even for something as silly as that. I've realized how prideful you are too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the most humble person I know. Humility is the attribute of which I am most proud. I can go on. I'm a dad now. <laughs> well, no, I, I definitely, definitely agree with that. I did have a hard time with that because, not to say that everything that I have done is a reflection of the house that I grew up in, but I think your household does tremendously affect that. And in my household, would someone apologize, like you held that over their shoulder for weeks at a time. And so like being quick to forgive was not something I was accustomed to. And I think a lot of our heartache would have been changed and avoided if we would have just looked at 1 Corinthians 13 and what it says about what love is. Love is kind, love is patient, does not envy, it does not boast. It is quick to forgive, it does not hold grudges. So if any time something happened between us, if we would have gone back and seen exactly what the Bible says love is, then I would have been able to look at myself and be like, well, what I'm doing right now is not reflecting that I love my husband. And so what can I do to course correct? What can I do to change that? Because at the end of the day, I love Jordan more than anyone else in this world under God, obviously. But like I am marrying him because I love him. Like I think we're so quick and easy to forget why we even married this person. Like why did you marry someone if all you're going to do is complain to them? Why did you marry someone if all you're going to do is tell them what their wrongs are? Why are you going to marry someone if you're just going to talk bad about them behind their back? Why are you gonna marry someone if you're just gonna be disrespectful and see how they're providing for your family and just, why treat the person that you claim to love the most? Why would you treat them like that? And I think this, again, the enemy just gets so in our heads and he's so, he's so upset that people are choosing unity and choosing to come together that when he sees such a beautiful marriage and what he sees, what the Lord can do through your marriage, because remember, when we get married, that is supposed to be a direct reflection of Christ. And so if there's a bunch of marriages all around the world that are a direct reflection of Christ and people see that and they're like, whoa, I want that. Whoa, like what is this marriage thing? If the enemy knows there's gonna be thousands of marriages like that, that's going to infuriate him and that's going to be very annoying to him because it's not gonna help him in his kingdom. He wants to attack marriage because it's so threatening to him. A good marriage is so wonderful for kids, you guys. Like, and that will forever, like it's just a it's a continual thing and so he attacks marriage so head-on because he knows the fruit that can come out of a good marriage a faithful a biblical marriage he knows the fruit that will be affected in the generations to come that will be positively affected from these two couples if you just really pull yourself back and like look at it from like all the way up here it's so easy to see like bro why was I mad at you because you put you didn't put your laundry in there like really like really, are you really going yeah, to let sitting right there? Yeah, like am I really gonna let that piece of laundry just ruin my day for the next four days? Like it's petty sometimes. Now obviously not every single case. There's always both extremes, and I think every time that you go and watch something online, especially online, you really do have to go with discernment. Just because a video is on the internet does not mean it's for everyone that is on the internet. There are some very specific videos that are for people in specific seasons. And so if you are in an abusive relationship, if you are in a relationship that is not glorifying to the Lord, not because of you, but because of what your spouse is doing, this video does not apply to you. And so I think definitely need to make that red flag statement because sometimes I think people will take this and twist it and apply it to a of toxic marriage, but that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about the mediocre marriages that could be better, that can be better, that the Lord can use to glorify him. Yeah, it's marriage on purpose. And back to the point about what you said of the devil seeking to steal, kill, and destroy Mm -hmm. marriage, it's spiritual warfare is what marriage is. Yeah. You having a God-sanctioned union with your spouse, Mm -hmm. where I say I do to Milena and I don't to everyone else, Mm -hmm. is something that the devil hates because he wants to, like Milena said, he knows the power that can come from that. Mm -hmm. And as his kingdom diminishes by others seeing a model, not a perfect marriage, but a model of marriage Mm -hmm. that's displayed for others to see, Mm -hmm. that's going to encourage them to 
trust in the Lord to make him the center of their union Mm -hmm. and to seek to disciple others and to grow that kingdom. And that's the, you can't gain in the kingdom of God and not simultaneously lose in the kingdom of darkness, right? right. So if one grows, the other diminishes. So that's what, that's why Satan hates it because he knows his time is short and his kingdom is shrinking. So Mm -hmm. that's a way that we do spiritual warfare Mm -hmm. is spiritual battle, right? And so that's why like we wouldn't be surprised when we see the attack on marriage and the attack Mm -hmm. on from all sides, right? So in closing, I wanted to ask Jordan what he would recommend a newlywed wife do to serve her husband today or something that she can do today to really like wow her husband. And obviously the advice that Jordan might give might not be something that every husband might want. Obviously all husbands are different and all men are different, but I think for majority, like the Lord did make men and women very different. And so Mm. there might be some specific things that might get catered to them. Um, This might be more personality type specific as I'm speaking to the ladies. Mm -hmm. And so it's okay if this isn't like your natural tendency, but if it is your natural tendency, this will probably be very easy for you. But what I would say is uh, just be a student of your husband, learn what he likes, learn Mm -hmm. times of day, what he's into. Like guys are pretty creature of habit routine about a lot of things. And Mm -hmm. so just kind of picking up on like activities, hobbies, interests, conversations, when to have conversations, right? And uh, Mm -hmm. if he's someone who his mind and his heart is connected to his stomach, meaning he needs to be fed, Mm -hmm. you know, before you can talk about certain things, then maybe use that as like an entry point for those other things that you need to discuss and go over in your marriage so or he might need to take some time and like hang out with some friends or whatever that might be Mm -hmm. learn to be a student of your husband because the more you learn about him and his personality and his tendencies and again outdoing each other in, Mm -hmm. in honor serving one another that's going to pay dividends to you down the road where he's gonna say I would say also don't be so quick to go out of your way to tell him of how much you're, you're doing. Or, oh, I do this, or I, you get to do this with your friends. You get to go here, you get to do that. And I don't, not that there's not a valid place for that, but I would say as you're starting off, like really get to study him because chances are you're probably not already living. And even when you are like going from not married to married, whatever that change looks like for you. There's a difference when you're tied together spiritually and in your heart with each other to say, okay, we're committed now. What does the rest of our life look like being together? So the more you are together and the more you see like your husband at his highs and at his lows Mm -hmm. and in front of people versus in private and what he likes all the way down to like TV shows and movie genres. Like Mm -hmm. Melanie and I have very different like enjoyment when it comes to mm-hmm. movies and shows but I know I'm a shared experience kind of guy so that's yeah. something Milena has picked up on with me so she'll tolerate or sit through something with me because she knows it brings me joy to have her with me along for the ride for that experience yeah. so things like that where you can study and, and learn or hey he really likes this kind of food and so mm-hmm. learning some recipes to cook that kind of food right and some of that's cultural or or mm-hmm how someone's raised but yeah I hope that's I feel like I didn't really give an answer but no that is helpful <laughs> just, I guess in the I, in the short of it be a student and learn your husband and all the little intricacies and it's fun because you get to spend your whole life doing it and he I, gets to do the same for you so. that's what I was gonna say I like that answer because it alludes to the idea that your spouse will never be the same they're always changing yeah that's and true. I think being like a Gabe has said this to you before is it having a PhD, PhD in your spouse? Yes, yeah. having a PhD in your spouse. No one should know your spouse more than you. I'm like do. graduating elementary school in Molina right now. No, you're not. <laughs> you don't. No, you're not. But like just knowing your spouse and constantly being a student because, again, as different seasons change and as different things happen with each child that you bring into the family, with a new job, with like everything that happens throughout life, if you're constantly studying them, you're constantly aware of those changes. And it's not like one day you suddenly wake up and you're like, whoa, you used to love when we used to do this together, now you suddenly don't. And they're like, yeah, six months ago, I stopped doing that and I do this instead. And you're like, oh, you know, like. Yeah, maybe a good picture analogy would be if you've been in school or college, you know, when you study something, a subject, it's a different experience when you're just reading a textbook with words on a page that are usually very dry and dull to then go out and experience that learning, right? It's, it's an experiential learning versus reading about something in a book. Perfect example is like going to Israel. When we went to the Holy Land, we went to when Jordan. When you went to the Holy Land, yeah, I did with our, with our church, Melina, yeah, she, she wasn't available, but this is like, gosh, nine or 10 years ago now. All that to say, you get a whole different experience being there versus 
just reading about it. And so in the same way, be a student in the sense of you're not just reading a textbook about your spouse, you're deeply immersing your whole life around their experiences too. Mm -hmm. I think it's very easy to have your separate lives. Mm -hmm. Again, the whole roommate idea, like especially if you both work or one's out of the house most of the day, it's hard to have those times where you like come together. And so really sanctioning time off too. It, it sounds kind of corny and I don't know we why. Still date each other. Yeah, I don't know why, but like my tendency or my natural reaction is like, uh, it's like to poo poo that and be like, nah, that's silly. That's like, that's a little extreme. That's, you know, it, it's exaggerative to say like, we need 30 minutes at the end of the day to just talk and share our hearts together and like mm -hmm. share wins of the day or, or lows of the day, whatever. Mm -hmm. It sounds silly, but then when we start doing it, it's like, wow, this is great. Why don't we do this so much more? You mm -hmm. know, why haven't we done this for so long? So, mm -hmm. yeah, study your spouse and uh, get a PhD. It's not mine. I can't take credit, <laughs> but it's true. If you have any advice that you would give to newlywed couples or couples who are getting married really young, let us know. Go off in the comments what those would be because I really wish I would have had more encouragement or had heard from other couples who were still fresh in their marriage. They weren't 20 years, but like I feel like around how many years we've been married because it like is still so fresh in our memory what happened those first couple of years, but it's still like we don't have a decade under our belt either. So yeah, let us know in the comments down below. Thanks Honey for doing this. My pleasure. Thank, Thank you for you. tolerating me. Thank you Ween for being a delight. Just a couple of goozing guys. Come here. Come here. Bitch. Mwah. What, you wanna go to the water park? Mwah. Mwah. <laughs> All right. Evangeline gives kisses like this. Bah. It's the Bah. Mwah. You and the Ween heart. That would be my Mwah. toe. That would be my toe. <laughs> All right. Oh, it's our cue to go. Love you guys. Stay blessed. We'll see you next video.